What's going on everybody, it's Tyler Owen. Welcome back to the vlog. Thank you for the support. I love y'all. Without further ado, y'all know I get straight into it every time. So let's get into it, baby. This vlog is about having orthorexia as a male. And you know, if you're a female, this video is beneficial too, but having orthorexia as a male and dealing with it in today's society. So first of all, what is orthorexia? Orthorexia is when you obsess over eating healthy to a degree where it is actually flipped and it's unhealthy for you. You're so obsessive over being healthy that you're in turn hurting yourself. And my buddy Pat turned me on to this. He was like, bro, you might be this, like you might have orthorexia, dog. And uh, lo and behold, like, definitely a year ago i definitely had it i'm definitely getting better now but i still have a, a very big chunk of my life is consumed by how my thoughts are toward food and how my thoughts are toward exercise to put it this way how do you know if you have orthorexia right most people every everybody knows everybody knows the difference between unhealthy lifestyle habits healthy healthy lifestyle habits unhealthy food choices healthy food choices we all know these differences most people choose to make unhealthy lifestyle habits and unhealthy food habits some people choose to make unhealthy lifestyle habits healthy food habits and then vice versa some people choose to make healthy lifestyle habits and unhealthy food habits. And then beyond that tier, an even slimmer amount of people choose to make healthy lifestyle habits and healthy food habits. And I know these things are a fact because all you have to do is walk into society, walk into a grocery store anywhere public and open your eyes and on 10 fingers count how many people are overweight. At least eight of them will be overweight. So this is how I know that these things are true. That's the, the facts are right there. It's they are 100% true. <laughs> There's no scheming out of it. So again, slim percentage of the population making healthy habits with lifestyle and diet. Then there's an even tier on to that slimmer amount of people making the healthiest lifestyle habits and healthiest food habit choices that they can period and that's a tier and then the tier above that is orthorexia where literally you wake up and you have to you have to run three miles before you put any water in your system before you put any type of food in your system you have to do a thousand push-ups before bed. You have to eat only fruit and vegetables. You have to eat only grass-fed, grass-finished beef, chicken, what have you. You have to, and if you don't, you will spend the next day or next two days eating nothing because you want to get that impurity out of your body. That's orthorexia. And I have had that to the T. When I started, my journey with orthorexia began about three years ago. Was it three years ago? It was like two and a half to three years ago when I started fasting. And that's a whole nother vlog in itself. But I started fasting and I did a 48 hour fast. I did a two day fast and I noticed the benefits from it. And I noticed all these toxins being purged out of my body through pee, poop. Um, I'm sure I was sweating some out and I was breathing some out a lot too, but mainly pee and poop probably. And um, I got addicted to the feeling of like being so light and being like there was no obstruction in my stomach, literally. I was 130 pounds. I was 6'5". I am 6'5", 130 pounds. And to put it into perspective, I'm 165 pounds now. So I put on 35 pounds since then of all muscle. 
skinny boys, baby, let's get it. You already know. But I got addicted to that, right? So once a week, I would fast. I would literally stop eating at like 8 p.m. the night before and go all the way till 8. And then another. So in reality, I was fasting for like 36 hours once a week. And low and slowly and surely it was taking away more and more muscle mass from my body that I didn't have in the first place to give, but I was addicted to it. And then on top of that, what I was eating when I wasn't fasting was strictly alkaline. It was the alkaline Dr. Sebi list. So anything, only anything alkaline, first of all, 100% vegan, whole foods. I was basically a raw vegan. This will text me. My bad. So I was raw vegan fasting for 36 hours once a week. Anybody who's been down rabbit holes with diets or anything like that, and for those of you who haven't, don't like put your two cents in because it's super annoying if you haven't done the guinea pig work yourself. So just don't. Anyone who's been down the rabbit hole with diet and regimen, things like that, and who have actually tried certain things, they know being a raw vegan is the toughest thing being a raw vegan and fasting once a week is just in it's blast it's literally insane it's stupid to do i was basically a breath arian <laughs> only breathing water or breathing air um so that's how it all started y'all and this would come into my relationships with people a lot and I would start to like view, I, I would, would like see what people were eating and see how people were addressing like their their daily lifestyle and how they were living. And I would start to like resent people and be like, oh, these people are, these people are stupid. These people are dumb. Like, don't they know? Don't they like, don't they? And they, most people don't know what it's like to fast, but I was just like, if only you knew like this feeling of like bliss. And there's a lot that goes into that. In reality, it's like your body's like full of adrenaline because it's in survival mode when you're fasting. And like, there's just, that's a whole nother vlog too. But it started to affect my relationships. And like, especially because social gatherings are, it's all based around food. <clears throat> Don't ever try to argue with me on that. Everything, everything that you interact with somebody is always based around food, no matter what. Even if you go to Starbucks, bro, it's like some of one of y'all is getting a scone or something. It's all based around food. Christmas, Thanksgiving, every single holiday, every birthday, every event, every social event, there is food involved, period. So it hit me pretty hard because I would go to social events and my mom, you know, that was the hardest thing because like I would put her under pressure because when I would go to her house, she'd be like, what do you want to eat? Like da, 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 da. And I'd be like, well, I can only have like three things I can only have like I, don't, I can only have a kale salad and in my mom's head she was probably like Jesus dude my son is going off the deep end and then there'd be times where I would come home and my mom would cook like a really healthy dinner and I would look at it and be like I, I can't eat this you know or if I did eat it I would literally do a thousand push-ups or a thousand body squats before so my body would like get rid of it as fast as possible. Delusional thinking. <clears throat> and that's the main thing that it, you know, that it affects when you have orthorexia, especially as a man. I want to sh just shout out to all the men out there who have this disease. It is a disease. First of all, you ain't alone. I don't see a lot of YouTube videos with just men dealing with orthorexia. So it's like, I feel you, I'm with you. If you need help, if you have questions, let me know what's up. Um, but, you know, dealing with your relationships, you know, socially from a social aspect, it does, it's detrimental. It's not healthy because you start to view people certain ways and then you start to not, but you're like, well, I'm not even gonna go to this event because I already know there's going to be X, Y, and Z involved like, with food. And I don't even want to think about that. I don't want to be tempted. And then you start to avoid certain things that otherwise might have been beneficial for your life. So I've been much better now. Um, and what got me to be better is I was a cardio addict. I was, I was a road biking addict for so long. And then I started running. And then with my last girlfriend, actually, I started running. And then I started lifting weights because I didn't want to be 
a pussy anymore. Like I didn't want to be so light anymore. And I'm six five, so I started lifting for that reason. And then I got into calisthenics. And now I have full control over my body and I'm a lot more swole than I was. I put on 35 pounds of pure muscle. So now in order to supplement the workouts that I do, I have to eat more sturdy foods. I literally have quinoa cooking right now. Quinoa in this rice cooker. And these are lentils that I'm about to cook up. So I have more dense foods like this. And I'm not so scared of like, oh, but it's not alkaline. It's not on the SEBI list. It's like, these are healthy foods, you know? And I have an avocado. And you could grub these all day and probably still not get fat. There's no oil. There's no white sugar. It's like, bro, oil is not your friend. People be putting oil, like, bro, I swear to God, people be putting like oil in their cereal, bro. People just treat oil like it's like, yeah, I'm just putting some oil on it. People literally, I'm this is I'm getting into my old ways, but it's like this is how stupid people are. People will put oil over a potato and then bake it and then cut the potato open and only eat the insides of the potato. Why the fuck did you put oil on it? People are addicted to oil. Anyways, I don't know where I'm going with that, but I'm I'm eating healthy foods, like no oil, none of that. You don't need no oil. Oil is not your friend. So uh, I've been way better with it, but orthorexia, socially from a social aspect, and mainly with my mom, like I wish I could go back and be more kind and be more patient and be more free and be more um, realistic in dinner time with her and you know eating with her and the time that I did have with her I'm not even in the same state as her now so I can't see her as much but when I do see her now I'll be able to really enjoy like when I see her for holidays and stuff I'll be able to enjoy and I'll be able to eat the food that she cooks and taste the love that she put into the food you know even if there's meat or whatever I'll be able to you know take some and know that it's good and enjoy the moment and then the next day go ham to burn those calories off but then eat good food after that too you know what i'm saying so i've been down the journey the orthorexia is no joke people who think it's a joke people who are like yo like what, what is it how could you even be so healthy that it's detrimental to you like y'all just don't get it it's on the same avenue as anorexia bulimia these serious issues that men deal with people only think women deal with this shit bruh i know that men deal with this because i went through this and i'm still going through it i have body i have body dysmorphia when i look in the mirror i don't see pecs in a six pack and i i, I know i have pecs in a six pack I've, the majority of the population has man boobs it's like i have straight up pecs y'all like can't see the camera on it but it's like bro I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna be weird, but I see less because it's like, I just, I'm addicted to pushing myself. So I'm still dealing with it y'all skinny boys for life, but I'm skinny and swole now. That's the difference. I can hold my own now. If I, if I got into it with somebody, I wouldn't get my neck snapped. You know what I'm saying? I'm rumbling with that fool. If I get into something, you know what I'm saying? No one's trying to get into it with me. But, and I'm still not even that big. I'm 165 pounds. I need to put on 30 more pounds. I need to be 195 of pure muscle. You know what I'm saying? Get that, get that muscle up, baby. Look at that. It's okay, you know? It's okay to be full of yourself. It's good, you earned it. I earned it. I earned that tricep. Orthorexia is no joke. And I'm still dealing with remaining sediments of it so if y'all need help with it if y'all curious about it more my journey if y'all curious about it literally go back to my first videos and look how rail thin i was go back to my first videos it's no joke and then look at the progress i've made there is hope and if you know that you have it deep down subconsciously but you're telling yourself you don't have it and you know you have issues just my number one advice is just be conscious.
be careful. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to get injured or nothing like that. Just be cool. Just be careful. Most people aren't like me, though. Like, I was biking to and from work every day. I was biking 20 miles a day on a dangerous road, 135 pounds, 6'5". Like, I could have died easily. Starving. I was literally starving to work, from work, while at work, at my house. I was starving. But in my head, I was just like, oh, fasting. Like, there's nothing in my body. I'm so healthy. Like, if you're like that, and I know a lot of y'all are like that, maybe not so much on the exercise end, but with the fasting part, just be careful. I know it's hard to give into. Trust me, I know. And if you don't want to give into it and say that you do have a problem, just know that I'm here. You could come for me. You can, Sorry, you can come to me and ask me questions straight up. I ain't gonna put you on blast. I'm not gonna humiliate you or nothing. Like, ask me questions, use me. I've been through it. I made it through it. I could have died real shit. A lot of people, go back to my first videos. Look how real thin I was. I could have died. Love y'all. Catch y'all, it's Tyler Ron. It's the 12th of October. <laughs> it's the 12th of April, 2022.